welcome to the command post. You know what it is. Post up. Take command. I, of course, am your commander in chief, Louis T. Thank you for joining me. So I have an interesting concept for you today. So um, I got to thinking about the draft and how I feel about the moves made by the commanders to this point. And I've gone through the roster with you guys a couple of times. I did it again on Bleacher Report. Uh, shout out to everybody that supported me that were, was able to jump over on the Bleacher Report stream. I know it was very last second. I got the information last second, just like you got it last second. So it wasn't like I was sitting on that information for a very long time and then decided to promote it literally 15 minutes before I went live. Literally, I got it probably an hour before I went on live and then I you had to set up and set the stream up and set the artwork up and then I, all I had left was 15 minutes and I chose to promote with that final 15 minutes. But um, shout out to everybody that was able to come over and support. That really means a lot to me. So um, shout out to the mob. Y'all know what it is. Stand up. We in the building. Anyway, um, I've, I've, as I've gone through the, uh, you know, the roster with you guys, um, it put me in a frame of mind heading into this draft of thinking about it from a different lens. And I came up with this concept and I want you guys to participate. And it's what am I OK with? What am I indifferent about and what I'm not OK with? What's a non-starter for me as we head into the draft? So I said, give me three things that you're you're OK with. If, if these things don't happen in the draft, you're fine roster wise. You rationalized it in your brain already and you're OK with the results. You're, you're prepared to live with the results if this doesn't occur. Right. Then there are things that I'm indifferent about. I would prefer it happen. But if it doesn't, I'm not really tripping. If it does. Cool. I'm excited. But if it doesn't, eh, it's whatever. Right. Go either way. I'm not really tripping. I'm kind of in the middle. The needle isn't really moved uh, from, you know, one of these moves taking place or not taking place. Right. I'm not going to be upset if they do it. Don't do it. I'm not going to be overly thrilled, but I'll be excited if they do do it. But if they don't, I'm like, oh, OK, cool. I can see why you didn't do it. Right. And then lastly, what I'm not OK with, what is a non-starter for me, this has to happen or there's a problem. Sort of like we in training day. If you do not do this, then we have a problem, right? So these are, these are items that I've gone through in my head and said, this is what needs to happen. This is what I'm okay with happening or not happening. And then this is what I could care less. If they do it, cool. If they don't, whatever. I'm not tripping. So let's start with the three items that I'm okay with. I'm at peace with these situations should they um, just totally ignore these positions in the draft and, and decide to spend resources elsewhere. I'm okay. I'm okay with it. First thing, not drafting a defensive end or uh, slash edge rusher. We've come up with the roster needs. We've looked at it. We, we feel like we need a starting defensive end. The likelihood of us finding a starting defensive end in the draft is very low in, in my estimation because we're not going to spend a first round pick. More likely than not, I can't say that we won't. Can't say that we won't trade back up into the first round for a defensive end, uh, but the likelihood is that we won't. And also, I'll, I'll go out on the limb and say the likelihood that a really good edge rusher that you fall in love with is sitting there at the top of the second round won't happen either. I think those guys are going to go. The ones that we kind of hold in high regard are going to go in the first round, and I don't see one being there for Washington to take at 36 nor 40. 40. But if they were to, to take one, I'd be cool with it, but ultimately, in my mind, I, I've said to myself, you signed four edge rushers in free agency, Dorrance Armstrong, Dante Fowler Jr., Cleveland Farrell, and F.A. Obata. You're not going to probably need an edge rusher in this first year of the rebuild. Um, could you use one? Sure. But ultimately, how much is that guy going to play if... He's, a, say, a third-round pick. And he comes in, and he's performing like a third-round pick. Really solid, but he's inconsistent, you know, not giving you high-level play quite yet, not ready to contribute on a massive scale. You're wasting a year of a rookie contract on that defensive end when you've already got three other capable bodies 
you know, on the roster that you've signed that will be playing opposite of Dorrance Armstrong and being mixed into the rotation. It's, plus, you still have K.J. Henry if you like him, and we'll see where he factors into all of this, whether he's on the practice squad or someone else snatches him up if we release him, whatever the case may be. But to me, I don't think that there's really a need, per se, for defensive end. You can get by with Cleveland Farrell or whomever they decide, F.A. Obata, whomever they decide to start at defensive end opposite of um, Dorrance Armstrong, I think you can get away with it. It won't be ideal, but I think you can get away with it. And I've already kind of had reconciliation in my brain that if they don't draft a defensive end, I'm not going to be tripping about it. I'm okay. I'm okay. Next thing, not drafting a linebacker. We've done damage in free agency at the linebacker position, um, adding Frankie Louvu, adding um, Bobby Wagner. I mean, even on, on a low-level uh, signing of Anthony Pittman. Again, I, I still think you could add a guy, but if they said, no, we're good. We're not going to add a linebacker this year. You know, we'll, we'll attack that next year in the draft, and we'll prioritize it. Same thing with defensive end. If they say, nah, we, we did enough in free agency, we'll prioritize that next year in the draft. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with them saying we're going to roll with the linebackers that we've, you know, and, and again, they could get an undrafted guy that comes out of nowhere and ends up making the team. But if they said, no, we're good with what we have. You know, we still got Jamin Davis on the roster. You added Frankie Louvu. You added Bobby Wagner. Um, you added Pittman. And, and they may add another guy in free agency once, you know, post-draft, you know, cuts happen, post-June 1 cuts happen. There could be a guy that gets cut off of a roster when we when the rosters get trimmed down from, you know, 75 or whatever or 90. I think they can keep it all the way till the end and they trim it from 90 down to 53 and there's a linebacker that shakes free that they like. Anything could transpire. I'm not pressed for a linebacker is what I'm saying. I'm not pushing the envelope. If they get one, cool. If they don't, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that, right? I'm, in my mind, I'm like, don't draft linebacker. I'm fine. We can go other places elsewhere. There are other positions that need more help. Don't draft linebacker. I'm okay with that in my mind. Next thing that I'm okay with, the final thing that I'm okay with, is not drafting a speedy third back and or return man. So for a lot of you, you guys are like Chris Rodriguez Jr., I'm not a massive Chris Rodriguez Jr. fan. I think he's a jag. He's a, a back you can find a dime a dozen. He doesn't do anything explosively. He doesn't do anything extraordinarily. He's average to me. He runs hard. You can find anybody that runs hard. You can find a lot of backs that run hard. If that's the prerequisite for having a guy on the back end of your roster at running back, then you could get an undrafted guy that runs hard. Okay? He's not fast. He has no wiggle. Um, he's had fumbling issues in his past. He's fumbled in his career in the NFL already. Uh, I'm not a massive Chris Rodriguez Jr. fan. So I don't feel like the running back room is complete. You could draft a running back to challenge him. If I were them, I'd be strongly considering that. If there's a guy that I like there in, in the fifth round when I have two picks, I'd strongly consider drafting a, a running back to compete with Chris Rodriguez. He's not a core special teamer either. He's not great at that. So to me, he's not a lock. But if they said, no, we're good there. We're good at running back. We're, we'll explore that next year. But adding Austin Eckler, having Brian Robinson Jr., and knowing that those guys are going to be on the roster the next two seasons, barring some kind of catastrophe or change in, in direction, you feel good about that. So I'm not tripping about them adding another running back. Although I want speed, I'm okay. I've reconcili I've had reconciliation in my brain that I'm okay with the setup as is, but I wouldn't be opposed to them adding a back and having him compete with, or, or even keeping four backs. That's not out of the realm of possibility either. But, um, and getting a return man, having Jameson Crowder return punts, having Noah Igbenogany be a, an option as a return man puts me at ease. Um, I'm not really stressed. If they were to get one, cool. But I'm not stressed like I was last year where I desperately wanted Dax Milne off of punts and just needed a guy back there on kickoffs not named Antonio Gibson, right? 
I'm not as pressed this year. Okay. Not as pressed this year. So if they don't do that, I'm okay. I'm fine. Right. So those are the three, three things I'm okay with. Not drafting an edge rusher, not drafting a linebacker, not drafting a speedy running back or just someone at the running back position to compete with Chris Rodriguez Jr. or a kick returner, right? Three things I'm indifferent about. Three things I'm indifferent about. First thing, I'm indifferent about drafting a tight end. I've gone back and forth in my mind about needing to upgrade the position. Um, Zach Ertz is definitely a Band-Aid solution. He is not uh, end-all, be-all, fixed to the position I think he's a, a upgrade over Logan Thomas, but it's not the massive upgrade that we were looking for, right? He's not an equal. He's much better than Logan Thomas. Even at his age, he's better than Logan Thomas. And, and, and Logan was roughly the same age anyway. I mean, what, what are we uh, saying, right? Who are we kidding? But at the end of the day, if they said, we're, we're good at tight end, you know, we like John Bates. We don't love him, but we like him. We're cool with Cole Turner and kind of exploring what he has in this pivotal season for him, uh, he could not make the roster. It's that dire for him. Or he could be on the team and they could think he's got talent and they want to explore him. And then, you know, same could be said for um, for Rodgers, right? Amani Rodgers. So they could just say, we got four guys that we like. Uh, we're going to add, a, you know, a undrafted guy to compete in, in camp and, and just roll with that. And I'd be fine with that, right? If they drafted a guy, I'd be ecstatic about it. If they didn't, I'd be cool with that, too. I'm kind of in the middle. Like, if they don't draft tight end, I'm not tripping about it. You know, I'm not tripping. I think you're fine at that position for, for this year. And then, again, next year, you redirect your attention to free agency in the draft, and you see if you can find your long-term answer at tight end. But I, my preference is to get a tight end because you have Zach Ertz here, and if you got Zachary for a year, why not utilize him to be a mentor for that young tight end? Just makes too much sense to me. But again, not doing it, you know, it's, it's indifferent for me. I, I prefer them to do it. But if they didn't, in my brain, I'm in the middle and the needle hasn't moved one way or the other. Same could be said for drafting a nickel. Over the last week, I've convinced myself that in this very deep nickel draft class, which I desperately would love to get one, Quan Martin may be the answer at nickel, and we, if they said we want to give him an opportunity to see, we liked what we saw in limited snaps last year, especially towards the end of the season when he got settled in and they gave him a specific role, we think he can flourish in that role in this defense, and we want to give him an opportunity, and we want to spend our draft capital on other positions that we deem to be more important right now and more uh, dire Okay, all right. Uh, I've I've reconciled. I've uh, I've come to a place of peace in my mind where, although I desperately would love to poach one of these nickels in the draft, if you tell me that Quan Martin is an answer that you want to explore, similar to how I felt about Ricky Stromberg before they signed Tyler Biotish, if they would have said, uh, "We're good at center. We're gonna roll with Ricky Stromberg and see what he's got," I would have been okay with that. Uh, I'm glad they signed Tyler Biotish, but had they not, I would have been okay with that, and the needle would have been right here in the middle, and I wouldn't have been tripping about it either way. Kind of how I feel about, you know, the nickel corner. Like, boy, there's a lot of options in the draft, and it's hard for me to see you pass those up. But at the same time, if you said, Quan Martin can do this, I'd say, okay, let's see it. I'm all right, right? I'm here with it. Boy, I'd like to draft one. It goes this way. Then I go, eh. Carl Martin might be able to do it, and it goes back to the middle, so that's where I am. I'm indifferent. If they don't get one, I'm okay. I'm indifferent about it, right? I'm indifferent, but I still want one. I'm leaning this way, but if they don't, I'm here. Drafting a second tackle is the last thing that I'm indifferent about. Another thing, just like the nickel corner, I've gone back and forth about. In my mind, I've said, there's no way you can start two rookie tackles. I just There's too many moving parts on this offense as is. It's a brand new scheme. You're going to bring in a rookie quarterback. You're going to have four new offensive linemen starting on this line, no matter what you do. As long as Andrew Wiley isn't starting at right tackle, there's no way you're going to have 
a setup here where there aren't four new offensive linemen starting. And two of those offensive linemen can't be rookies at the tackle positions. I, I just think that one starting offensive tackle that's a rookie is fine and that's enough. And so by not drafting that second guy and not starting that clock on that rookie contract early a year early, I think I'm, I'm, I'm indifferent about it because from this standpoint, Cornelius Lucas' signing puts me at ease almost to the point where I'm like, if Cole Luke had to start and he talked to the media uh, today and he told them he's coming in to compete to start, which is what he's supposed to say. What, what, what is he supposed to say? Now, nah, I'm a swing tackle and I'm cool with that. No, he wants to get a chance to compete. And I think he may get a chance to compete for a starting spot on that offensive line. And should he be given that opportunity and he seizes it, which is what we think he would do if given the opportunity, um, I'd be okay with him starting. And here's the kicker, though. It's not just Cole Luke because you guys already know I feel good about Cole Luke. It's the fact that behind him, Trenton Scott showed me a little something last year. Enough. I don't love Trenton Scott. And there are flaws and holes in his game that limit him to just a swing tackle, unlike Cornelius Lucas, who can start for you and you feel comfortable enough with him starting. I don't feel that way about Trenton Scott, but I do feel like in a pinch, if you need a guy for two quarters, if you need a guy for a week or two, Trenton Scott can step in. He showed me enough last year that I think I feel comfortable enough that if they said, Cole Luke, you're starting, we're going to draft a tackle, and we got Trenton Scott as our swing tackle, I think I'd be okay with that. So the needle is here because of not only Cole Luke's presence being back on that one-year deal, but more importantly, Trenton Scott still being here. I didn't know just up until a week ago when I took a look at the depth chart and the, the roster as a whole for the first time. I didn't know he was still here. I thought he signed a one-year deal last year. So I didn't know he was still on the roster, but he's still here, right? If, if, because that's going to be a need next season. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Cornelius Lucas will be a year older. Uh, I, my assumption is Trenton Scott will be um, off of his deal. I'm assuming he signed a two-year deal last year, and he'll be uh, off the books. And you'll be, and again, you'll need to upgrade the position, period, right? But you can do that next year. So I'm here. I'm here. Three things that... I'm not okay with, that I wouldn't be okay with. These are non-starters for me. If, if these things happen, we have a problem. First thing, not drafting a wide receiver. Now, preference-wise, I'd like him to be a taller receiver, but I'm cool. You could draft a 5'8 receiver. You could draft, you know, a 5'11 receiver. You could go get the kid from uh, UVA, right? That That's this nick, that this, that's this slot machine of a receiver and bring him into the mix. And I'd be perfectly fine with that, okay? I don't care who you draft at receiver. I just need a, I need a dog at receiver, okay? That's all I'm looking for. He could be in a 5'8 frame. He could be in a 6-foot frame. He could be in a 6'2", a 6'4 frame. I don't care. I just want another dog to add to the mix. So, you, but you have to draft a receiver. I'm not okay going into the season with just Terry, Jahan, and Deami Brown. And Jamison Crowder. I'm, that, I'm not okay with that. So you have to draft a receiver. All right. Next thing I'm not okay with is not drafting a boundary corner. You have to draft a boundary corner. I am not okay with going into the season with um, Emmanuel Forbes Jr., Benjamin St. Juice, Michael Davis, Noah Igbenogany, and James Pierre at corner. I'm not okay with that. Nor should you be okay with that. OK, I'm OK with them not drafting a nickel. I'm not OK with them omitting boundary corner from their draft strategy. They must come away with a corner, whether he starts in his rookie season or he plays behind Emmanuel Forbes Jr. And we're assuming Emmanuel Forbes Jr. starts. That's a strong assumption to make, but it's not out of the realm of possibility that he has lingering effects from last year's debacle and doesn't play well. I'm hoping that he wipes that from the memory bank. They are able to re uh, rewire his brain and get him back to the Mississippi State um, mentality that he had coming into the league that I'm a dog and, and he's out to prove it. 
And now you just got to find a guy to start opposite of him. And I think Michael Davis is, is fully capable of doing that for one year. But whatever the case may be, you have to add another young corner. This is not optional. This boundary corner has to be added to the mix. Has to be added to the mix. Okay? Then lastly, this is a thing that I don't think is going to happen, but I just need to say this. I'm not okay with trading back from two. There are a lot of people that still um, think trading back, uh, acquiring assets, and taking a quarterback at some point, um, which is just is asinine, especially now that Sam's no longer on the roster. I think a lot of that trade back uh, you know, crowd has sort of dissipated a bit, but there's still some out there that believes, hey, we can trade back it to four. Nobody wants to come up to number two unless they want a quarterback. Like Arizona's not coming up from four to two to ensure anything. They everything that they want is right there at four. They don't need a quarterback. So you can't fleece somebody and 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 have it be the best of both worlds. People love to concoct trades in their mind that benefit their team and doesn't benefit the other team that's a part of the trade. Trades only happen when it's viewed as being mutually beneficial. So Arizona coming up, they can get whatever it is that they want. At four, they don't have to come up to three with New England or two with Washington. Everything that they want is right there at four, okay? If they want a tackle, they can take one at four. If they want a, a, a wide receiver, they can take one at four. Arizona has two first-round picks. They don't need to come up for anything, okay? The Giants want a quarterback. Do you want to give a team in the division an opportunity to take one of these quarterbacks? Hell no, right? The Chargers don't need to come up. And you don't want to go back too far, right? So, again, the bottom line is you sit here at two. You've got an opportunity to take a quarterback. Take the quarterback. All right, that's number one. So trading back from two is a non-starter for me. It, I would lose my shit if they did that. They're not going to do that, though. But I just wanted to say that's a non-starter for me. The other part of that equation is staying at two, which I assume they're going to do. I expect them to do. You can't take J.J. McCarthy at number two, and they won't. I'm not worried about that either, but it's just something that I have to mention because, as I've told you, it, there's a 3% chance that he's the pick at two. It's not zero, and because it's not zero, I have to then say, don't take J.J. McCarthy at two unless you want to piss me off, and you don't want to piss me off, okay? So... Those are, those are all of the non-starters for me. Those are the things I wouldn't be okay with. All right? Not getting a receiver, not getting a boundary corner, and trading back from two or staying at two and selecting J.J. McCarthy. These are things that I'm not okay with. What says you? I've given you three things I'm okay with, three things I'm indifferent about, and three things that are non-starters for me. Think Three things that I am not okay with. What says you? You agree with me? You disagree with me? You got others that, um, you know, that I didn't mention? And there are other things that I could talk about. I, I got plenty. I have a list here in front of me, but I wanted to give you guys some options. And some of the things that I'm indifferent about, you might be like, no, 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 no. That's a non-starter for me. I, I need one of these, right? Say nickel, right? Or that second tackle. You're like, no, 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 no. I need that second tackle, bro. Like, right? That's not something that I'm okay with. You leave it down in the comment section. I can't wait to read your responses. I think this is a fun exercise and hopefully uh, you guys enjoy it. But uh, and, and what it also does is it trains your brain to start thinking about what if, what if, you know, what if they don't do this? How are you going to feel so that you don't get caught off guard with your emotions come draft day? A lot of you guys get caught with your pants down on draft day when um, they make a decision that you didn't even think about, which sometimes I'm baffled by. Like, you didn't think about the alternative. What if they don't like you can't be so narrow-minded and your focus can't be so laser-like on one outcome that you don't consider well what if that doesn't happen sometimes you guys get caught up in that i think but this exercise should help you to think outside of something that you may have been focused in on and maybe thinking outside the box a little bit more anyway i digress that's going to do it for me your man louis t here on the command post you know what it is post up take command hopefully your brackets aren't in the toilet mine went to hell in a handbasket on day one so i'm just watching for fun at this point and seeing how long my duke blue devils can last in the tournament 
Um, hopefully, by the time you're watching this video, they haven't already been eliminated from the tournament with their first game. Um, we're not very good. But enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the basketball. And then we'll come back and we'll chop it up on the other side of the weekend. Until then, you guys have a great one. Take care. See you next time. Mm -hmm.